I have asked the question, what do you struggle with the most to many of my online jewelry groups and forums? Well, the number one answer for most beginning and intermediate jewelers, they responded with that they struggle with their torch control. The next most common is the finishing and getting that really good high quality finish on their piece. Third was coming up with designs that show their own unique style. Hi, I'm Melissa Muir. I'm a metalsmith and a teacher of all things jewelry making. In this video, I'm going to begin to address at least the first of these and show you a few things that I do with my students to help them be more comfortable with controlling the flame and producing consistent and pleasing results. Before we jump into the next exercises, let me recap what we have covered in the previous two videos. First, I introduced you to my savvy soldering method as a way to become proficient in using your torch and other tools to create your desired piece time and time again. In the second video, I introduced you to a lineup of torches that I use here in my studio on a regular basis. I discussed the pros and the cons to each of them and showed why I have different torches and when I select different ones for different jobs. In case you haven't watched the first two videos yet, make sure you do that right now because we covered a lot of important things in those videos and I don't want to leave you in the dust in this next section. And this next section is also going to make a lot more sense if you have already watched those. Do you want to know my secret to creating high quality and professional jewelry? I do the job right the first time. And that means knowing my metals and how they are going to react. Anytime you bring a torch into your piece, whether to anneal or solder an element onto your piece, you really need to know what is going on. Not only with the torch, but also with the metal itself, because different metals are going to react so differently. I have each of my students do different exercises to get comfortable with their own torches. It will also allow you to see if your torch will be able to handle the jobs that you are attempting. So there are two scenarios that are almost constant among my students. Scenario one, they receive or purchase an oxyacetylene torch with small tips because they figured they're going to need a lot of heat and because they're working with small pieces, they would need little tiny small tips. Or scenario two, they picked up the $5 torch from the discount hardware store because well, it looks like the other torches and it was only $5. In both of these scenarios, neither student knew much about the torch or how the heat works in relation to the pieces they were wanting to create. The torch is either too hot and continues to melt through almost everything they touch regardless of what they try, or they just cannot get the solder to flow no matter how much flux they have used or how clean the piece is. And in both cases, they have heat control issues. Let's try a few simple exercises to see what our torches are really capable of. In this exercise, we are going to use both copper and sterling silver. Both of these metals are heat conductive, meaning that the heat will spread through the entire piece. That also means I need to bring the entire piece up to temperature in order for my solder to flow. Copper has a higher melting temperature than silver, so that also means that silver is going to melt before copper given the same conditions. To keep our video from getting too large, I'm going to show you four torches, a in Air, a Propane Oxy, an LH10 Professional Butane Torch, and the Firebolt Micro Butane Torch. I'm going to demonstrate three exercises, and all four we're going to be showing the same. In the first exercise, we are going to create a head pin in 20, 16, and 14 gauge. In our second exercise, we will do a one inch square controlled melt around the edges. And our final, we are going to solder a tube or bezel set onto a one and a half inch square sheet. Here you'll see I've set up all four torches so that we can easily see what is happening at the same time in real time. Now you'll notice that some of these torches are going to go quite quickly, but that little torch, well, it takes its time, but that actually is kind of good because it gives us the ability to really watch what is going on. And in the end, that one took 23 seconds to ball that wire. So next up, we have 16 gauge. And again, we will have similar results. Those pro propane and acetylene torches are hot and much, much faster. Whereas again, our little butane micro torch, well, he does the job. He just takes his time a little bit at 21 seconds this time. And finally, we have 20 gauge. I'm sure you can understand this is going to go fast regardless of the torch, but still 11 seconds for that micro torch. 
Next up, we have a 20 gauge sterling sheet. Now I've sped this up 600%, so it's gonna go quite quick. And you know, again, some of them do really well, that poor little micro torch, well, he just was not up to the task on this one, and I stopped after two minutes. So this last one is a pretty big deal. 800% is what I sped this up. So they all took a little while. This is 20 gauge copper with a five millimeter tube setting. Our two smaller torches kind of struggle, but they do both eventually make it. One and a half minutes for our micro torch and two minutes, 47 seconds for that propane oxygen torch. You can see that each of these torches had different strengths and some weren't quite up to the job at hand. Now for a little bit of homework for you. Pull out your torch and try a few of these exercises. It is important for you to know what your to current torch can handle. How big of a piece can you alter? Can you ball up the end of a 20 gauge, 18 or 14 gauge wire? Are you able to do a controlled melt of a one inch square of 20 gauge sheet? Now these are just a few simple exercises to help you master your torch control and see how the metal, silver in this case, reacts to various torches and flames. In my upcoming freeform cuff workshop, we will go through multiple projects together to ensure you are comfortable with the techniques and to stretch your wings and find your own unique style and voice and create the pieces you really want. Now, if that's something that you're interested in, make sure you click the link under this video and put your name on my early bird waitlist. Everyone on that early bird waitlist will get access to the registration link for my course the night before the program opens up to the public. In my next video, I'm going to show you my complete plan from beginning to end that you need to follow to create beautiful jewelry that is well made and recognizable as your own and to gain the confidence in your skills to make it happen. I'm literally drawing the curtains and showing you every single step you have to take with the savvy artisan approach. You don't want to miss this video because I literally share with you the complete game plan. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you'll stay tuned for the next video. I will see you there. Bye.